This video was made possible through a grant from the Haas Corporation. The Geek Group would like to thank Haas for their continued support in helping encourage innovation in design and manufacturing in America. Hi there guys, my name is Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. I am here with the great and wonderful KC Higley, Director Hi. of CNC for the Geek Group. Mm -hmm. And today we get to talk about probes. Yes, we do. Now, what, what are probes? Why do people ever want to do this? So the machine has no idea where the tool is in yeah, space. Yeah, but we huh? programmed that in with offsets. Yeah. The cool thing with a sheet of paper, old school, like, mm -hmm. that's why guys keep like a rolling paper in there, like an old zigzag, and like, oh, it's perfect. And they know it's exactly, exactly two thousands of an yeah. inch. Yeah. So why, why do we have to do this if we can do all this manually? Well, this is a lot quicker and despite how accurate old school machinists are, this is a lot more accurate. <laughs> okay, so this is, this is the cigarette paper method, but for the 21st century. Yes, exactly. And how accurate is this? Uh, to within one tenth. Okay, so this is accurate, accurate. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, now we're doing half of this today. We're doing tool offsets. Yes. So, but there's a totally different probe thing for work offsets, yeah. and they come as a set, they work together. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do we do this? Uh, well, first of all, we need to tell the machine an approximate value for how long the tool is. Okay, so, um, so we're from, do that. from here? Yeah, from right, right about there. So how approximate? Do, do we just say, oh, it's about three inches? or? Uh, we need to be within about a quarter of an inch. Okay, so that's really approximate for your world. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So we'll replace top edge against the spindle, and then we'll measure from the back side here. An uh, approximate value, about there. So that's about 2.75 inches. Okay. So then we go to our offset page on the control. Okay. And we'll need to put that value into the approximate length in the probing options. Okay. So that's uh, 2.75 right in. Now we have to give it a rough diameter, but that we should really know because we know that's a two inch shell mill. Right, it's okay. a two inch shell mill, so two point. And then it wants to know how far down it should go from the probe face when it's touching off our diameter. And In so, case the diameter, because like a shell mill is thicker at the bottom and it goes up in the middle or? Right, and some uh, tools have like round inserts or they've got tapered inserts on okay. the side. And so you're gonna need to go down farther to get an actual diameter on okay. it. Okay, so this is, this is how far up the shaft to go. Right, the exactly. Okay. Um, and then for uh, high precision work uh, and probing in the middle of a program, you can put in a tolerance value. Um, Hang on a minute. This thing's measuring the diameter of the tool. Yeah. Why would it need a tolerance? Let me see if I got this right. If you tell it it's a two inch shell mill mm -hmm. and it's coming in at like 20 thou under, it's right. going to say, oh, you're way out of spec. Right. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. So this is a way of measuring. You can use this as like a subroutine in the middle of a program yes. to go and check, is my tool worn out yet? Yeah, exactly. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. And then we um, need to tell it what sort of operation it's going to be doing for probing. Uh, okay. Zero is no tool probing. So if we told it to probe every tool in the carousel. You can do that? Yeah. Do you have to go in ahead of time and say with your approximate diameters and everything? Yeah, yeah, okay. you have to get le approximate lengths and approximate diameters. But this is, again, for high precision. If okay. uh, you know you use it for a day and then you wanted to uh, reprobe all of those tools that you used, you can go through the carousel. And it just does the whole thing on its own? That's really thing, Does cool. the tool changes and everything. Okay. Um, and then next, would be number one, which is length probing with rotation for something like an end mill, okay. um, where you don't necessarily need to know the diameter, um, okay. or you don't need high precision uh, for the diameter. My guess would be the, you've got, I see you've got four different things. Mm -hmm. Length probing with rotation is for like end mills and that where you're cutting on the side, yeah. and they go in and out. Um, and then length probing, number two is length probing non-rotating, which I'm guessing would be for like a drill. Yeah, yeah. Where you're machining off the end, not the side. Right, exactly. Okay. And then you've got three, which is length and diameter probing with rotation, which yes. is probably what we're going to use here. Yeah, that's what we're going to use, because we want to know the exact length and diameter of okay. um, 
the tool. And then it just tells you what to do to pick. Exactly, it gives you options okay. and, and instructions. So we'll hit what it says, hit tool offset measure, key right now, here. Do we have to tell this, like, because it says over here there's a picture of a drill. Do we have to tell this what kind of thing we have in there, like whether it's a tap or a drill or end mill or whatever? Yes, actually okay. we do. So um, farther back in the offset page, so this you is hidden on a totally type. different page. It's on a totally different page. Okay. Um, and we want a shell mill. We want a shell mill. That's okay. number three. We'll hit enter. And we want to tell it the number of flutes as well. This has five, four, four flutes. Four flutes. Okay. Uh, so four F one, and that's the number of flutes. And then it knows diameter and all that because it got right. that from before. And then another page here, you see that the geometry for the tools has not been probed yet, so it doesn't actually know anything okay. about them. We go all the way now what's through. The, there's, there's some stuff in here, like coolant position? Yeah, we have um, the uh, positional coolant unit uh, on oh, our okay. machine, and that number determines where the nozzle is positioned when it pulls up that tool. Okay, but that has nothing to do with the offsets. No, anymore. nothing okay. to do with the offsets. I just, I saw it in here, I'm like, oh, hey, okay. Um, so, again, we're ready. And I see you've got the tolerance thing in there. So you can say if this is minus five, you know, if it's more than five thou out, then throw it away by a new one. And I'm guessing this would throw an alarm or something. Or... Yeah. Something okay, like cool. All right, so tool offset measure. Nothing happens automatically without the doors closed. Okay. It's probably um, a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so now we have options again. We can probe this selected tool automatically. Um, we can do manual probing. Now what's uh, manual probing? Is that is that like doing this all in hand Very infrequently job? used, yeah. Okay. Um, we can probe the tools for breaker wear and that's where that tolerance value comes in. Um, and that's where you would take, I'm guessing this will generate code and you can just copy it and paste that code into your program right on the machine? Uh, yeah, it actually tells you right here. So we oh, can either hey, run it, yeah, okay. or we can insert to copy it, the probe code to the clipboard okay. and put it into a program. So there's a million different options with oh, this. Yeah. It can get way complicated really mm -hmm. fast. Yes. Okay. Um, as we said, probe all, select, or all, or all tools, um, everything in the carousel, or we can just cancel. Okay. So we'll go ahead and hit cycle start because we want to probe this tool. Okay. And then magic happens? Yeah. Oh, it's running a whole program, just dumping stuff in here? Mm-hmm. This is neat. Gets to an approximate length and starts going down, and about here it'll start spinning counterclockwise. Why does it go backwards? Because it cuts in the clockwise direction. So it wants to make sure not to cut the little probe. Exactly. Okay. Is it doing, oh, it does it twice. Uh, coarse and then fine. Okay. We'll and now we're going thing. from the side. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it'll come from the side um, twice, coarse and fine on one side, then go to the other side so they can get an average. But it's rotating. Right. Wouldn't that be the same number no matter which side you're on? I suppose. Okay. I'm, I'm sure there's a reason for it, but I'm kind of curious what it is. Mm. So every time that beeps, that's when it's actually touching. Yes. It's done, it goes home. That's yeah. it. Yeah, that's it. That's all there is to it. Okay, so. There's no paper in the middle, you're not. Now, did the, the paper. numbers in here change or? The numbers in this page did not change. But However, somewhere there's crazy accurate numbers for exactly. So, our approximate value was 2.75 inches. The okay. actual distance is 2.9610. Okay. So, we were within that about a quarter inch. So, when this says this is a two inch diameter mill, well, that's it's length. actually, yeah, but I'm, I'm going over okay. here on the, ge this is, I'm guessing what the geometry is because I mm -hmm. see diameter up here. Mm -hmm. This is actu act actually 2.0037 inches. Right. So it's just a hair bigger. And it's, just a little bit. And it knows. But that, it matters. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's really neat. Yeah. So that's 2.37 thousandths. That's right. 3.7 thousandths. Right. Yeah. That's neat. All right. So That's all there is to it. It's that easy. <laughs> it's that easy. That's so cool. Now, how does... This is going to sound dumb. This is what I think, and tell me if I'm wrong, because I'm just watching this, all okay. right? So 
what's happening is the tool comes down and it touches the little post and the it isn't like electrically conductive it's actually the post is being displaced yes, it's, it's being actually moved. shoving mm -hmm. it around really 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 tiny yeah and this little thing is on its own and it's got to be waterproof and all that there's no wires or anything into or out of this right so this is i saw a little light shine on the back here yeah. and that's sending it up to the renishaw box mounted up there now that's got wires and stuff Right. So I'm guessing this is done optically, like this is blinking yes, a little is. code, mm -hmm. and that's got like a camera in it. Yes, it does. And then that talks to the computer in the machine. Mm -hmm. Very quickly. Very, very quickly. Because things are moving at the same time as it's sending that information. And it, it has to know really accurately where this is sitting. Mm -hmm. So this isn't something that you could move in and out of your machine all the time. Oh, no, no, no. This This is installed and you leave it alone. Yes. Okay. So you um, never touch this, you never move this. That isn't really a big deal. That Because right. as long as it can see it, it's fine. But you never, never, ever move this. If you have no choice but to move it, you have to completely recalibrate it. Can that be done by the end user? Or is that a you call your Haas factory rep thing? We've actually done it. We've actually recalibrated it here. Okay. So... Uh, it can be done by the end user, and you use the work probe to do it. Oh, okay. That's the the other one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we get to talk about that in the next video. Yes, we do. Okay. Is there any other things that we should talk about on probing, or is that pretty much how it works? Can, we, tr can it, we try it again? We can try it again. How about a different tool? Yeah. Pick one. Uh, can we do something hard? I've got some really, like, I've got scary, gnarly tools over here. We're doing tool number two. What's two? Is it's it cool? A, it's a spot drill. It's like the most boring thing ever. Yeah, well. I want to do... Okay, right. so spot <laughs> drill and, well, center drill. Right? No. That's a center drill. No. It's not a center There's drill? a difference. What's the difference between a center drill and a center spot drill? Center drill is made for a live center on a lathe. Okay. It has a 60 degree taper with yes. a small uh, flat for the point of the center to go. Okay. A spot drill is normally 90 degrees. Spot drill. Yes. Okay. So, can I do this? Yeah, sure, go All ahead. Right. Um, so we have to know, the first thing we have to know is the length. So this is where we get to do caliper trick. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let's see if I can get this right. So we measure off the face. Yes. Because that gives us a rough to the dog. Mm-hmm. We go down here. We're about 3.728. So All right. about three and three quarter. Sure. So I take, I go over here and type, do I just type or? You'll need to be highlighted over the right thing. So right now we're in the probe type, so we need to scroll over to okay. approximate length. And then I just type 3.72? Sure. Okay, and then enter? Yes. And scroll right. over one. Approximate now, diameter we don't need, but it's 3 eighths, so. Okay, just because you just know that? Yeah, just because I know that. Okay, what's the decimal for 3 eighths? 0.375. Okay, so just. Point three seven five. Mm -hmm. Enter. Now we're not doing any diameter on this one, so edge measure is unimportant. Okay, so I just leave it at zero. Just leave it at zero. And tolerance is zero. Type is length probing rotating. Uh, we don't need to rotate. Diameter? Okay, so length probing non rotating or Correct. length and diameter. Uh, just uh, just length. Okay. So number two. Two. Enter. Mm -hmm. um, now I have to go to the other page and tell it what type and all that. How do I get to the other page? Uh, just continue scrolling with the cursor. Oh, we're right there. All right. Um, um, so it will be the next page beyond that. Oh, I just keep going? Mm -hmm. yeah. Flutes. Has two. Okay. Um, and I want to pick center drill. Yes, despite okay. the fact that it's a spot drill, yes, you want to pick okay. center drill. <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm looking at the pictures, and I'm like, that's the closest one to what I have. <laughs> so, five. Yep. All right, now, how Continue do I... Continue scrolling. Just keep going. And go all the way to where you change the probe type. Here? Uh-huh, and now you've got the options. Okay. Um, so, so, now... So, press tool offset measure to start automatic probing options, and that's yes. this button here? Mm-hmm. Probe selected tool, cycle start. No, I, green means go, so when I do this, thing's gonna happen. Oh yeah. I'm not gonna break anything, right? Not to my knowledge. Okay. That has never failed me, <laughs> ever. <laughs> I've just learned it's always a good idea to ask before you push the big green button. Oh yeah. So, 
So now it's gonna, we're, we're coming in on approach. Mm -hmm. And all this one's gonna do is hit. That's it. You could really see the difference between the coarse and the fine on that. Like mm -hmm. on the, boom, and, and the whole thing moves. And then the fine, it doesn't even move. Right. I'm sure it does, but not perceptibly. Right. And I'm done. That's I'm it. Probed. That's all you needed. So now we have two tools. Yes. We can make anything. We, we can make anything <laughs> that uses two tools. Okay. Yes. Well, cool. Um, is there anything else we should talk about in this? No, I think we've pretty it. well covered yeah. it. It's right. very, very simple. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. And we'll be back in the next video where we get to talk about uh, work probes. Oh, with yeah. That's, the that's super rugged, never break it ever probe shaft that comes out of the spindle that nobody ever breaks. I broke it the first time I used it. <laughs> but we've gotten a lot better. We now. have. Yeah. Okay. And you've come a long way. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. You guys need to comment and let KC know how he did in his very first video. This, this is his first time, and he's not at all terrified of being on camera. He's completely comfortable. Yes. It's awesome. So you teach the classes here. I do. So if you guys are interested in learning more about this stuff, you can come to this lab here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and take one of our awesome CNC classes that are taught by KC, mm -hmm. and he will teach you how to make steam engines. This one has your name on it. <laughs> Well, I've got to show them. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the Model 2 steam engine. We have a whole series of steam engines, and they are all being designed and built by Casey and his awesome team. Yeah. And it's a really cool class. You can actually come here and learn how to use this exact machine and our giant lathe and do all kinds of fun stuff. It's really cool. And they do them in brass for some of them so that you can actually see things happening because we can cut this without coolant, and that's a really fun time. Yeah. Learn more at thegeekgroup.org. Remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. And as always, we'll see you next time. The Geek Group would like to extend our deepest gratitude to the Gene Haas Foundation for making this program possible. Thanks to their generous contribution, we are able to train and inspire machinists all around the globe. Operating the CNC machines in this video risks personal injury and mechanical damage. Hazards may include electricity, untrained operation, airborne toxins, flying debris and noise, fire and explosions, poor shop upkeep, sharp tooling, projectiles, loose clothing, inadequate clamping, automatic operation, automatic tool changer, unsupported bar, over-tightened steady rest, lack of enclosure, and impact. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.